Today I'd like us to take a look at one of the most powerful features in Python, the class. Uh, this is your ability to create new types of objects that you want to work with. Um, for example, we've seen a few times now creating these 3D objects like a sphere that have these certain attributes like position, radius, color. Um, and a couple of times we've cheated a little bit. I, it feels like cheating to me where we've added on additional attributes that aren't really part of the sphere object. Like we've added on velocity, um, vector 0, 0, 0. We've added on mass, uh, 9.11, e, negative 31. You know, uh, charge, um, 1.6e, negative 19. Uh, spin equal to one half. You know, we, we, we sort of added on those things and later on when you wanted to reference those we just said print electron dot mass. And so if I hit control 2 I get my 3D electron here and I get my print statement of electron mass because it's taken that mass variable and it's attached it onto this object that I have named electron. Uh, but really Mass and velocity and charge and spin, they're not really part of the sphere um, class. They're just uh, things that we've added on for convenience. What would be great would be if I could make a new class of object called particles. And that's what we're going to look at today is how to set up a new class in Python. So let's comment these folks out uh, so we have them for reference. The first step in creating a new class is using the class statement. You notice it turns purple because it's a word that Python recognizes. Our new class is going to be the particle. Um, the first thing we have to do is we have to tell Python what to do in order to create an instance of this class. So the class is the type of thing and then the individual objects that you create with it are called instances of that class. So the first thing you have to do is give it an init function. So the double underscore here indicates that this is a built-in function that, uh, that, that Python will recognize and it's going to look for this init anytime you create a new instance of this class. Um, and this is where we need to give the list of um, inputs that we are going to be using. So for example, every particle needs to have a position, it needs to have a velocity, um, actually, pause is already taken, so let's just call it, well, no, let's call it pause, that's fine. Uh, I, get, I get nervous when I, re when I reuse names that are already taken by other, uh, by other things. So we'll call it position, velocity. Uh, it also needs a mass, and it needs a charge, and it needs a spin. Now there's one thing we're leaving off here that every init function needs, and that's the opening uh, argument needs to be self. So this is, the, this is the variable that's going to refer to this particular instance of the class. So it's going to be necessary to use this uh, in the lines that follow. So here we put a colon because this is a function that we're defining. And what we have to do is we have to now attach all of these values to the self. So we have to take these um, variables, the, these, these values that the, that the user is giving us, and we have to attach them to self. So we have to say self.position equals position. I have to say self.velocity equals velocity. Same thing with the mass. Same thing with the charge. Same thing with the spin. And any other uh, properties that we want to add on, any other attributes that we want to attach to this, um, uh, to this particle. And this is, the, this is the essential thing that we need. There's really not anything else you absolutely have to do to create a class. So for example, I can now say electron is a particle and I can give it position equals vector 0, 0, 0. I can give it velocity equals vector 0, 0, 0 just for simplicity. And then let's just copy the mass and charge and spin from here. Copy, paste. Uh, let's get rid of the extra line break there. There we go. So what I've got here is an instance of a particle that has all the properties I want this electron to have, and I'm calling it an electron. Uh, and then what I can do is whenever I want to refer to any of those attributes, um, I just use electron dot 
mass, just like we've had before. Let's hit Control 2. There's our electron mass. So basically it has all of those attributes attached to the instance electron, which is or the object electron, which is an instance of the class particle. But this is just the beginning. We get to build off of this anything that we want to associate with this particle. So for example, I can give this particle uh, it's it's 3D representation. Um, let's call that the self dot. Maybe let's call it body, um, where I create a sphere uh, with a position equal to position and a radius equal to. I guess I should specify a radius up here. Let's just give them all the same radius for right now. Um, actually, let's do give it a color attribute up here. So we'll say C O L for color. And so I need to give this thing an input of color.green. Electrons are always green in my mind. So now what will happen is it's still going to attach all of these variables to the electron, but it's also going to attach this body. It's also going to attach this 3D representation to it. And there we go. So now I get my visual display. Notice it's handling the creation of the visual display inside the, uh, the object creation. And then I get my print statement here which is cool. Now, of course, those aren't the only attributes of a particle. We also have to worry about, for example, the linear momentum of this electron. But the linear momentum is its mass times its velocity. So I don't want the user to be specifying a mass and a velocity and a linear momentum. The way I can do that is I can define a new function, call it linear momentum. Uh, let's go ahead and spell it out. Momentum. There we go. And I'm just defining this as a function. And basically what I do here, I think, do I need to give this an argument of self? I think I do. I think I have to pass the self uh, value to this. Um, what I can do here is I can say uh, that self, actually I don't want to do that. I just want to hit, I just want to do return self.mass times self.velocity. And so now what I can do is I can ask it for electron dot linear momentum and I have to give this an open parentheses and close parentheses since this is a function so basically every time I call for its linear momentum it's going to take the mass times the velocity and return that for me um, let's see what we get here we should get zero 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 and um, we do we get a vector zero 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 um, let's try giving it a non zero velocity. Let's give it a velocity of 1 in the x direction and negative 0.5 in the y direction. Control 2. And there I get, so I get this thing times 1, this thing times negative half, and then this thing times 0. So anytime I want the linear momentum, I just uh, use the linear momentum function attached to the particle that I'm working with. Now, one of the things you might have noticed when working with these. Um, 3D objects is that you don't always have to specify uh, every argument. So for example, you can leave off the color argument and it'll default to a color of white. Or you can leave off the position variable and it'll default to a position of zero, zero, zero. The way we do that is by giving some default values to these uh, object attributes here. Um, so the way to set that up is by setting giving them a default value here of none, meaning suppose they gave you no velocity or no mass or no charge or no spin. Not a value of zero, but just the user didn't specify. So for example, suppose the user left off the, the velocity value here. What you do is you put in an if uh, velocity is none, then you can give it a default value. You can say self.velocity equals vector, and a good default velocity is probably zero, zero, zero. You probably don't want to default it to the speed of light, just a thought. Else, you can make the self.velocity equal to velocity. So basically, if they don't give you a velocity, uh, then you can default it to zero. And if they do give you a velocity, then obviously you use that value. So you can do that for each of these um, attributes. Okay, so I've put in this uh, check for none for each of our values here. I've also updated the sphere command to reference self.position and self.call uh, just in case those aren't specified. We can get them from the object itself. Um, 
So this is just a way to you know check and make sure that uh, you have a value for each of these attributes, even if the user doesn't provide one. And when we hit Control Two, we get the same result we had before: our uh, green electron here, and we get our mass and our velocity that we specify here, right? So none is the default value. It's only going to provide a value of none if you don't give it a value of one of these things. Um, here we provided a value for them. Um, I could, for example, leave out the mass, control X, and I have the mass set to default to 1.0 here. So here we're gonna get a mass now of 1.0 because we didn't provide one, and I can uh, I cut it, so I'll paste it back in, control two. Now the mass goes back to 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. So that's a pretty basic introduction to classes. Um, you know, beyond this, you can just build whatever you need to have in your new class. So you just need the init function to create an instance of the class, and then you define whatever other functions you want to have. Um, we'll do a follow-up video uh, to this one to talk about um, local and global variables because there might be some variable values that, uh, that the class needs to reference for all instances of that class or for everywhere in the code. So we'll have a follow-up video where we talk about that. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.